let me define what millionaire is to me, what is to us on this show. Being a millionaire is not just having a million, million dollars on paper. It's called net worth millionaire, paper millionaire, because you can't put it in your pocket. Yeah, it's good on paper, it's net worth, it's part of your assets, part of your estate. But in our opinion, the best way to become a millionaire, let me just go, go over it real quick. One way you can be a millionaire, just like this NFL athlete we're going to be talking about here in a second, you can play professional sports, you can be a CEO, you can have a job, and it'll pay you a million bucks. Good luck, you got the right MBA, you're talented, you're highly skilled, highly educated, all this stuff. You can be a hired CEO and become a salaried millionaire. The second way to become a millionaire is what we call fix and flip or buy low, sell high or buy, you know, buy a, a baseball card. I remember about my mentor Patrick but David bought uh, Wayne Gretzky's uh, two rookie cards for $500,000. 17 months later, he flipped it for $2.1 million. That's called a capital gains millionaire. You buy something low, you have to sell it at a higher price. The thing there is you constantly have to keep fix, fixing and flipping or buying low and selling high in order to continue to generate a million dollars. The third way is what we call net worth millionaire. You buy a piece of real estate, you have a $2 million piece of property, you have a million dollar loan on paper, your net worth says your equity is a million bucks, you're a paper millionaire. The other way of being a millionaire, you could be, you could be lucky. Married into the right family, married the right wife, husband, uh, lottery, you can, you can be lucky. Fifth way to become a millionaire, my preferred way to become a millionaire is cash flow millionaire because you decide to take a risk to bend on you, to start a business, to start a service, to start a solution that fixes people's problems. You are now a millionaire cash flow. So Grant Cardone here talks about becoming a millionaire. I mean, Milton, you got a million bucks, okay? You got a million dollar in the bank. How do you feel? Although a million dollars may have seemed very, very attractive when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I think now it's something that if I'm not financially educated, or as you said, educated <laughs> on what, what to do with a million dollars, I would still feel very stuck in my own personal ways. So uh, knowing that I personally will be stuck in my own personal ways and not knowing what to do with it, let me ask you a question, man, especially when it comes down to this specific thing. Mm -hmm. uh, He's saying $1 million is equivalent to basically middle class. Why is it that so many people nowadays, although they're struggling, especially men, the men that are putting their families through this financial struggle by not stepping up to the plate and providing the finances that the family needs, but either by learning a, a, a trade or a skill, learning a new business technique that you can pr you know, implement into your life so you can create more money for their families, mm -hmm. why, is it, why is it that so many men are content living at a minimum wage, working one or two jobs, taking time away from their families just so they can barely make it through? Why, why, is that, why is that a headspace that so many men have pulled into? It's easier to do. It's easier to quit than to innovate. Mm. It's easier to give up and settle than it is to actually grow. I mean, think about how many people you face in a gym. How many people said at the beginning of the year, Milton, I'm going to I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna have a six-pack, I'm going to fit in this dress, or fit, you know, I'm gonna, I want to uh, gain 10 pounds of muscle, whatever the case may be, whatever their goals are, but we're at the gym on Wednesday because it was March 1st. What comment did we make to each other about the gym and it being empty? Getting empty again. It's getting empty again. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. But it's, it's harder to <clears throat> grow and innovate. It's easier to settle and quit and say, you know what, I'm just not going to increase my capacity and let me just settle for this job. It's easier to just work with my hands. It's, it's, easier, it's so much easier to do that. Um, Jordan, let's take a look at this article. Can we go to my screen? So if you're in the middle class, so his example here, Milton, is that of this million dollars, they're going to take $48,000 from this million dollars for the next 21 years. And his argument is, you do that, you're broke by the time you're 50. So if all you did was drain your million dollars for 21 years, living off a middle class income of $48,000, you're out of money in 21 years, assuming that you didn't invest it, mm -hmm. it was just there in the bank, was earning, earning a rate of return. Now, uh, I was on TV uh, in Chicago talking about this FIRE movement, okay? F uh, financial independence, retire early. FIRE, that's what the acronym FIRE stands for. Financial independence, retire early. When we're looking at... Uh, the average income in America, let's say you're single, average median, average single uh, uh, income in America is around $35,000, $38,000. If you're married, median household income is about $62,000. If the person is single, marries another person that's single, their median household income will be roughly around sixty dollars to $65,000. That's not even enough to buy the average home in America, which is approximately $450,000, $500,000. Mm -hmm. So if you're earning that type of income, you can't even afford to buy the average home America. So when you're looking at just being a millionaire on paper or just having a millionaire, million dollars in a bank, you know what? As much as I disagree with this guy on a lot of things, 
he's actually right about this. He's actually right about just having a million dollars of liquid cash and you're living off that and it's earning no money. You're not doing anything to contribute or add to it. And all you do is drain. Think about this, $40,000. What happens if an emergency comes up? Uh, a parent needs your help. You're re- you need to retire your mom and dad. You need to pay their bills. Your kids want to go to private school. You're not, you're not making a lot of money from this million dollars just statically staying in the bank. It's got to earn a rate of return. That's why I said the most important millionaire status that you're, you should be aiming for is just not having a million dollars in the bank it should be having a cash flow million, a career, a business, uh, 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 an endeavor, a service, an ownership of something that brings you in a million dollars a year. And, and mm. t- take a look at this, Milton. Here's an example. I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines after eight years, wow. 20 grand. And so I had a choice. I can either be smart and get promoted and retire at 38, 40 years old with a full military pension. That's the smart thing to do. Or I can be wise. Figure out what these guys are doing in Orange County where, where I was stationed. Figure out what these guys are doing to be get, you know, getting rich. Why are these guys uh, riding around in the ocean in yachts? Why are they hanging out in Fashion Island, Newport Beach, and Huntington Beach? I remember going to Balboa Island. I don't know if you guys know where Balboa Island is in Orange County. I went to Balboa Island, and all I can afford to take my, my at that time, my, my, my then wife and uh, uh, son is hot dog on a stick and a pink lemonade. It's all I can afford. I couldn't afford it on the rides. I just looked, we looked at it. Cool, can't afford to go on it because we're broke. I had 30 bucks, 40 bucks, maybe at most. Spending money, I couldn't really enjoy life. So if you're out there, man, you know, to your point, Milton, if, if people are out there and say, you know what, this $48,000, $50,000 is enough, not enough money, you've got to make a choice. Either you settle and reduce your dreams to match your limitations or you decide to increase your capacity to match the dreams and how big you're thinking. And uh, you have to surround yourself with the right people and make sure you're in this you know, situation where people are around you, are poking you and egging you. I mean, we were having uh, cigars with uh, Michael Jordan uh, in his grand opening and, uh, uh, in, in Chicago, in Oak Brook. And Michael Jordan was sitting across the table from Richard Dent, Otis Wilson, 1985 Chicago Bears. You know what Michael Jordan's saying? Mm. Hey, Otis, hey, Rich, what are you guys doing these days? What are you guys doing these days? He's like, Mike was egging him. He's poking him. What are you doing these days? Are you still talking about what you did in 85? Are you still talking about what you Jeez. did in the 80s? Come on, man. What are you doing these days? So he's poking him. And think about this. Michael Jordan makes more money from his, his endorsements and, and ownership in Jordan Corporation that is in, in one year than his entire NBA career playing 13, 14 years in the NBA. So think about what ownership did for him. By being a great player, the phases are you become a great player, you're good at this game, but there's no money in just being a player. There's no money in just being an employee. There's ownership in, own, in ownership. The guys that make the most money is not the players that, that play like that Prescott and Justin Fields and all those guys, right? The guys that make the most money is McCaskies, is Jerry Jones. There's power in ownership. So I hope and pray that in 2023, many of you are thinking more about ownership than settle than settlership <laughs> your thoughts on that i agree and again being around people like you met and the people that, uh, that i've been networking with in these la- these last two years and a half or so uh it's definitely taught me to definitely take a different approach when it comes down to finances and the way i see money uh a couple of years ago the way i saw money was a, is a, as a means of, of uh, surviving and scarcity Right now, you just literally spoke on how the average household for a single man or a single person was about thirty, thirty-eight thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I just sat down with my CPA yesterday. He scolded me that um, I needed to reduce my spending when it came down to my eating, and he showed me the, the list of my of my spendings. And last year, in, in two thousand twenty-two alone, I spent roughly around thirty-three thousand dollars on just food. But that involves taking clients out to eat, you know, having them down, sitting them down, X, Y, Z. But thirty-three thousand dollars on food—that's anywhere between twenty-five hundred to three thousand dollars a month. Growing up on what, food. What was your mom? What was your mom? What was your parents? What were they spending on groceries to raise you, man? Do you remember? My guy. No. Maybe a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks a month. Maybe at that. And you're spending what twenty-five hundred dollars a month on food? Thirty grand. Yeah. I used to make thirty grand. About five, six years ago, a year. It's, it's 2500 a month, bro. That's a lot of money. It's, it's, uh, it's 10 times more than what you were raising. Well, here's the thing. You're in business. It's a write-off. <laughs> but at the same time, too, the rising cost of food, rising cost of eggs, and, yeah. and everything we've been talking about in this podcast for a minute. But uh, you know, everybody loves to go out and eat out. And by the way, that's you being single. That's me being single. You know what? You know what, you know what Sheena and I spent? I have two kids that live at our house. We have other people that live at our house. 
Now, my parents take care of it. Easy, seven, eight thousand dollars a month on food. Jesus Christ. Think, think about this real quick. If you want to take care of the people that you love and care about, you're taking care of yourself, you're, you're good. You go yeah. out, you're good. You're not worried about signing a credit card because you decided to take the risk, go in business for yourself, leave your job, take a stab in capitalism, take a stab in entrepreneurship, you create your own deal, right? And your brand right. is growing. You're demanded all across the country. Yeah. People are trying to fly you out, demanding your services because you decided to take a risk. Correct. Money people aren't willing to take the risk. Remember I talked about earlier, it's easier not to take a risk because of the risk of failure, but that's the benefit of capitalism. That's the benefit of free enterprise. Free to buy, free to sell, free to win. People love the win part, yeah. but here's the part they don't want. They don't want the failure part. Here's the bottom line. In my entire life as, a, as an entrepreneur for 24 years, I've seen a lot of people come in business. Sadly, I've seen a lot of people quit business. I've never met a winning quitter. I, would, mm. I have, however, met winning failures. I mean, these guys fail at something, guess what they do? They get back up again. There's a clip of uh, Michael Jordan talking to parents. He said, listen, so many parents put their stock in that one shot the kid wants to take, and you don't take a shot because they think they'll fail, they'll miss a shot. You know, Michael Jordan says, hey, I take shots all the time, and I miss, and I lose games. But yeah. Guess what? I'm getting back up again, yeah. and I'm perfecting that one shot. Yeah. I'm going to keep taking that shot until it's automatic for me to continue to overcome failures. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.